And find your ujjayi breathing. As we always do, please lengthen out both sides of your breath, starting with a very strong, long exhalation, one that engages your abdominals. Draw your navel all the way back towards your spine. As you inhale, expand your torso, lifting, lengthening, letting the sides of your body open even more, and every exhalation is a hugging in. Remember that we're wrapping our entire spine with a feeling of support. So it's not just drawing your belly button towards your, the front of your spine, the sides of your torso hug in, your back muscles wrap around the back of your spine. So that at the end of the exhale, we feel this intrinsic hugging, right, around the entire spinal column. Your upper back and your lower back, and of course, focusing on that middle back, that's sometimes a place where we don't feel quite as much as we do anywhere else. Take three more breaths like that and start to notice how long your inhale is. Make sure your inhale is at least four or five seconds, if not longer. Make sure your exhale is at least as long as the inhale, if not longer. If you feel like you're empty before that duration ends, keep the action of your exhale going. Just keep drawing your navel back and hugging the sides in and wrapping your spine with your spinal strength. But on the, at the end of this next exhale, let's bring the arms down alongside your torso. Inhale to open the eyes and sweep your arms up alongside your ears, press your palms together. Lengthen out here. As you exhale, bring your right hand, mirroring what I'm doing, down to the right side, left arm reaches over. Take an inhale here. Exhale, dive just a little deeper. Inhale, reach up and press your palms. And exhale over to the other side. Keep both feet firmly rooted to the ground. Take an inhale into the right side of your body. Exhale, dive deeper still, reach further. Inhale, rise up and press the palms. On your exhalation, we're gonna reach back. Take an inhale here. One more exhale to reach a little further. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, let's do that same thing once again. Exhaling over to the right. Inhale, hold the pose, root down more with your left foot. Exhale, reach further to the right. Go further than you did last time. Inhale, rise up slowly. Extend your torso, make it longer. Then exhale over to the opposite side. Right arm reaching, left arm down. Take an inhale into the right side of your body. Dive deeper. Good, inhale, rise up. Press your palms. On your exhale, reach back by moving your pelvis further forward. Remember that your crown is, not, is, is reaching back. Your head is not dropping down. Take another inhale here. Good, this time exhale, bring your hands down to your thighs. Round your back and engage your abdominals. Bring your chin in toward the soft part of your throat. Inhale, extend, pull the pelvis back, draw the ribs forward. Exhale, round your back, draw your chin in toward the soft part of your throat again. Inhale, extend your spine, open through the chest. And exhale to round your back. Round all the way up this time. Sweep the arms over your head. Take a long inhale. And exhale. Bring your hands all the way down to the floor now for our first forward fold. Now, bringing your hands to the floor may mean that you need to bend your knees quite a bit. And that's great. Do that. We will have plenty of chances to come back into this forward fold. If you do have a yoga block, you can put your hands on the block. If you have a chair, you have your sofa. You can put your hands even on the chair there and you can still draw your torso down. Keep your hips over your heels here and keep your abs strong, right? So no matter where we're at, you can find that support. Take another strong exhale here, dive just a little deeper. Root down, rise up, sweep the arms over your head, take an inhale here. And as you exhale, bring your hands to your heart center. Good. One more like that. Take an inhale to rise up. Do a little back bend here if you'd like. Exhale, dive forward. Pull your weight forward into the front of your feet for as long as you can until you're finally folding in. Hands come to the ground. Bend your knees if you need to. Or bring a prop underneath your hands here. Inhale, extend your spine. And exhale, fold your crown down toward your toes. Root down, rise up. Sweep the arms overhead. Inhale here. Take a little back bend if you'd like. Exhale, hands to heart center and navel back to the spine again. Strong exhalation. Good. This time, inhale, sweep the arms overhead. 
Exhale, dive forward. Once your hands are on the floor, take your inhale and extend your torso. Lengthen here and hold here. Please bend your knees until you find that extended spine position. There is no shame in bending your knees. You can also bring your hands up to the chair here and pull back this way so that it feels a little more like traction. Draw length, pull your pelvis back. Make sure your toes are lifting if your knees are bent. Take another strong inhale here. Good. As you exhale, I'm going to bring the, uh, if you haven't yet, come on to your, bring your hands on blocks or on that chair. I'm going to bring your left foot forward and step your right leg back. And both legs will be straight here. And then square off your hips. You can see what will happen otherwise you kind of sit down into the hips. We're going to root down to the inner edge of our left foot, our front foot, the inner heel of your back foot, hug both inner thighs together, and then dial the pelvis around so that the left sit bone tracks back and your right hip bone is pointing down toward the floor. Inhale. Make sure you're not hyperextending the feet, either knee, but especially your front one. And the way that we prevent that is by grabbing the left heel isometrically back toward the back of the mat. That'll also help you square off your pelvis. Good. Take another inhale here. As you exhale, maybe you go just a little further by hugging in with both inner thighs and see if you can bring your left hand, I'm sorry, right hand down. If you do have a block or something to put underneath your right hand, you can place it there and then open to the left side. Yeah, and if you have one of the rolled up mats, you can use the rolled up mat. This is not necessarily cheating. It's simply changing the way that we are relating to the pull of gravity. Now see, when I do this and I open too much and I forget about my legs, my belly is opening too much. So I want to keep this left sit bone drawing back. I want the pelvis to move independently of the rib cage. In other words, your ribs are twisting. Your pelvis is staying where we've already placed it, right? Keep breathing. Take one final inhale here. As you exhale, see if you can go a little further. That's it. Hug both inner thighs to midline. Dial the left sit bone back, draw the right hip bone down, ring out your rib cage so that your entire rib cage faces the left. Great job. Exhale, both hands back down to the floor or to your chair and just drape your body over your leg. Now at this point, if you can, because we are going to round our spine here, if you can, bring your hands all the way down to the floor, round your back, bring your forehead toward your left chin. Hug both inner thighs in as strongly as you can. Dial that pelvis around again. Take a strong exhalation here. Dive as deep as you can into this pose by engaging your core. Remember, you're finishing each exhalation and hollowing out the belly. And now transfer your weight onto your left foot and lift your right leg up. If, there, if the uh, chair feels like it's too close, just slide it away for a moment. And bring your crown down toward your left toes. And your right leg up toward the sky. Now, standing splits may seem like a silly pose to do when it's a yoga for stiffer bodies class. But I want you to work your strength here. Use the strength of your right leg to lift your right thigh bone up more. So think of your hamstring, the back of your right thigh, taking a hold of your right thigh bone and pulling it up further. Root up with the pads of your right toes. Meanwhile, your core is drawing your left ribs closer to your left thigh. Check in with your left thigh, by the way. Make sure your left quads are strong. The front of your left thigh is actively hugging your left thigh bone. Take one final inhale here. Lift the right leg higher. And exhale, step your right foot in next to your left foot and fold it in. Bring your hands to the ground again. See if the legs can go any straighter. You can keep your knees bent here, but do work out every time we come back into this forward fold, just checking on how much further we can go. Your hips are over your heels. Your abs are strong. Take an inhale, move into that flat back, bring your hands onto the chair if you'd like. Keep your right foot forward and your left foot steps back this time. We're extending our spine on this one. Highly recommend a chair if you've got it or this sofa. Again, at first, we might feel like we're sinking out into that right hip. So we want to start by hugging both inner thighs into midline, root down through inner edge of right foot. Push back through inner heel of left foot. Dial the pelvis around by hugging your inner thighs toward each other. And then isometrically drag right heel back toward the back of your mat. Your neck is long and neutral. 
Your gaze is down at your big toe, your right big toe. Take an inhale and take any rounding out of your back here. Find greater length here. Make sure you feel your back muscles working. Good, take one more inhale. And as you exhale, we're gonna bring that prop underneath the left hand this time. Make sure that all 10 toes are pointed forward. And also make sure that your toes are not lined up like you're standing on a tightrope. Your left foot lines up with your left hip. All 10 toes point forward. This time we're gonna to open to the right side. So with the left hand down on the bolster or the block or whatever you have as your prop, draw your right arm up. Notice how you're sinking out to your right hip, so am I. So I've got to make sure that the right inner, the inner edge of my right foot is still pushing down. The left inner heel is still reaching back. I keep dialing the pelvis around so that I'm moving the pelvis independently of the ribs. And when I feel like I'm hyperextending that right knee, just put a little baby bend into that right knee so you know you're not doing that, but keep the right heel dragging back a bit. Take one final inhale here. Exhale, bring both hands back down. And drape your body over your right thigh. Moving the bolster if possible or the block out of the way. And bringing your forehead as close to your right shin as possible. The way that we get there is not by yanking or pulling or forcing. It is by exhaling for as long as we can. And taking the time to engage our lower abdominals. Bring your forehead closer and closer to your right shin. And as you slow down your breath, make sure that you are engaging and emptying out completely before you take your next in breath. We're always looking for our strength to support greater length. Take one more inhale, root down to the sole of your left, your right foot, and lift your left leg up now. Keep both hands on the ground, draw your crown down towards your right toes, lift your left leg. Extend the left leg as straight as you can get it so that we're not trying to kick up with our knee bent or overdo our back. Lower your leg if your leg can't be straight. I want you to find your hamstrings. The back of your left leg is working. Lift your left thigh bone up with your left hamstrings. Push your right thigh bone back with your right quadriceps. Remember that your right shin bone is still, shin bones are still moving forward. Push down to the pads of your toes. Take one final exhale here. Everybody bring your ribs closer to your right thigh. And bring your left foot in next to your right foot, fold it in. Check in and see if maybe the legs can go a little straighter now. Palms are on the floor. If you have a yoga block or you have a mat that's rolled up or a fairly sturdy pillow, I'm gonna have you place it in between your inner thighs now. And then go back into your forward fold. This is just a little trick in feeling what it feels like to be supported intrinsically so that the outer body can lengthen and relax, right? Using our inner strength to find greater mobility and range of motion. Once we do plug into that inner connection. So squeezing the block really strongly or whatever it is you have to do with us. Draw the sit bones down toward the block at the same time. Notice my hips are not behind the heels. Keep your hips over your heels. Keep your shin bones moving forward. That means your weight is gonna be forward into the front of your feet. Squeeze the, the Yoga prop, draw the kneecaps up, move the thigh bones back, draw the sit bones down toward the yoga prop. Now start to rise up, doing all of that. So that we're, we're really squeezing, nice, really squeezing the uh, bolster there. And rising, take it inhale. Good, and again, we're gonna exhale and dive forward. Keep squeezing the block. Move the chair out of the way. Keep squeezing the block, draw the sit bones down, down, down. As you start to lower, don't let your pelvis tilt up. Draw sit bones down and come down slowly. Squeeze and draw sit bones down. Shin bones forward, kneecaps up, thigh bones back, sit bones down. Abs are strong, pull your ribs in. Do that again. Inhale, come up. Keep squeezing as strongly as you can. Keep drawing the sit bones down. Once your arms start to rise, root the heels down. Good. This should feel like a really good workout. I hope it does. Exhale, dive forward. Squeeze the bolster, draw the sit bones down. Keep pushing your thigh bones back though. Don't push your thigh bones forward, just draw sit bones down. Weight stays over your toes into the front of your feet, hips stay over your heels. One more time, all the way up. Squeeze the block, draw the sit bones down toward the block. Reach up and get taller here, rooting down to the heels. 
And one more time into that forward fold. Squeeze your yoga prop. From the very beginning, point those sit bones down. Push the block back. Push the thigh bones back, but keep the sit bones drawing down. Weight stays forward. And finally, fold it in. Good. And now notice if your legs are straighter and your hands are on the floor. <laughs> it's almost magic. So with your legs maybe even a little straighter, let's pull the kneecaps up again, draw those sit bones down, hands are to the floor. This time we'll step the right foot back and bend into the left knee. Once your left knee is bent, <clears throat> take an inhale and bring your hands up to your left thigh, opening up into a lunge position. All 10 toes are pointed forward again. We're gonna bend the right knee as well. Contract your right glutes and move your right hip bone forward. And your legs, if they start to shake, it means they're working, and that's a good sign. Keep hugging in with both inner thighs. Imagine you've still got the block there, or the bolster, or whatever it is you were just using. Draw the left sit bone back. Please make sure you can reach back and take a hold of your right glutes if you want to, and just make sure your glutes are actively moving your right hip forward. We don't want our weight to move into our right knee. But take an inhale and straighten out your right leg. Reach your arms over your head. And now press your back heel flat with your right toes turned out, moving into a warrior one. Beautiful. I'm not talking to myself, my sister's with me. <laughs> <laughs> Take an inhale to lift your ribs up a little higher. As you exhale, root down more through both feet. Take one final inhale, grow taller here. Stay wide open here. Good, exhale, you're gonna bring your right elbow to the outside of your left thigh. Stand up onto your right toes again, and now take a twist. Clasping your hands together, pushing your hands, left hand down, right arm pushes up into that left hand. There you go. If that is not happening, just keep your, you can put your right hand underneath your right shoulder to the right side of your left leg. We are breathing here, we are balancing here, and we're still exhaling. Hug both inner thighs to midline. Take one final exhale here. Good, bring both hands back to the ground. Lift your right leg up, off of the floor. Either keep your hands on the ground, we are extending our spine here, or you can bring your hands up to your chair again. Inhale, this is butterfly pose, supported butterfly. Slide if you can, the uh, chair forward a little more. And pull yourself apart, think of this as traction. For your body, use your own strength to pull yourself apart. Now bring your right foot down next to your left foot. Take a deep breath in in the spinal extension. Exhale, fold, hands back down towards your toes. Shake any tension out of your neck, your head, and your shoulders. And soften your face. Good, take another inhale, extend your spine. This time we're going to keep the right foot forward, step your left foot back. Slide the left toes back. But once you are there, take an inhale in this position, a low lunge, and bring your hands up to your right thigh. Push your hands into your thigh. Good. That's it. Good. Bend your uh, back knee. Square off both hips. Both of your hip bones are pointing directly forward. Your glutes are active. Left glutes, left hamstrings are active. Good. And your hands are on your thigh. Chest is open. Spine is lengthening. This is a strength pose to find greater flexibility, right? Once your body knows that you are supporting it, it will let go of a lot of that tension, that stored tightness. Take another inhale now, straighten out your left leg, sweep the arms overhead and press your back heel flat, moving into warrior one. Take some longer, deeper inhales here. Make sure that again, in this position, once again, your feet are not lined up on a tightrope. They're sit bone distance apart. Your right knee is bent at a 90 degree angle if possible. And our inner thighs are still working. As you hug into midline, take, take an inhale. Then grow even taller. Imagine you're sprouting your spine right up out of your pelvis. Use this as yet another pose of traction. Beautiful exhale. Bring your left elbow to the outside of your right. Knee standing up onto your left toes again. So lift the left heel up. And bring your hands, I'll show you the other side. Bring your hands into that uh, twisting lunge position. You can clasp your hands, you can push your, your lower 
fist into the upper one, bring the hands in prayer position, and push down isometrically while you push up isometrically, whatever works. Keep pushing back through that back heel. Keep breathing. Take a strong inhale and lengthen out your spine again. And a strong exhale to ring it out even more. Know that there's some mobility there we can uncover. Take one final inhale here. Great job. Exhale, both hands come down. Lift your left leg, extend your spine this time instead of rounding. If you would like to, you can bring your hands back onto the chair and use this as nice, exactly, as a pose of traction. Hands are on the mat, I'm sorry, hands are on the chair or the sofa or whatever as you pull your toes back. This is more intense than you think it is because the floor is a lot sturdier than even the chair or the yoga block or even the sofa. Take one final inhale, really truly extend. Exhale, bring your left foot down next to your right foot. Hands come to the floor. And see if maybe now we can get those palms on the ground. Inhale to a flat back position. This time we're going to plant the palms, walk back to a high push up pose. High plank. Take a breath here in high plank. This is not an easy class. <laughs> <laughs> it's different when you do the whole thing. <laughs> it's a hard workout. Push back through those left heels and draw the crown of your head forward, not, not just the left heels, both heels, left and right. Draw the crown forward at the same time. Take an inhale here and as you exhale, please bring both knees very gently and slowly to the floor. Inhale to an extended spine position. Exhale to round your back. Engage your abdominals, bring your chin in. Do a few more of those. Do them in your own time and pace. And move in whatever way makes sense to you. You can rock the hips side to side, do a figure eight. Whatever you'd like to do. This, this movement is really, really nice for just stabilizing your spine. Make sure that you don't drop the attention away from your breath. Do one more time in both directions. And as you find that rounded back position, plug into your core and hold your abdominals strong here. From there, I'm gonna have you lift your left arm and right leg off the floor. Reach your fingers forward and pull your toes back. Pulling apart into equal and opposite directions, left arm and right leg. Good. Hugging into midline, make sure that your right elbow is unlocked. Make sure your left inner thigh hugs you back to midline. Take another deep breath in here, lift both limbs even higher. And exhale, release the limbs back down to the ground. Inhale your right arm and left leg up, fingers forward and toes back. Lengthen out into equal and opposite directions. So if possible, your left heel wants to be in line with your left sit bone, and then pull it back, pull the leg back. Right, once the leg is up high enough, we're not trying to kick it any higher. Now we're looking for length. Remember in this class, we're using our own strength to pull ourselves apart, to decompress, and to create more space. Release the right hand and the left knee down. Take an inhale in this position, extend your spine. And now finally, let's move into our first downward facing dog. Now we're all waiting for that. Back into down dog. Find your breath here. Walk your legs out if you'd like to. Keep both knees bent if you need to. Whatever you're doing, check in with how you're breathing. Unclench the muscles of your face and your jaw, your eyes and your forehead. And as you take your last exhale here, dive just a little deeper into your down dog. And come back onto your knees. This time, we're going to keep the right hand down, open to the left side. So your left arm is going to come up. Your left leg is rooting down. That's it. Good. And then bring your left arm over your left ear toward the front of the room. Arch away from the floor with your right side body. That's it. So we want to stay out of the right shoulder girdle entirely. Yes. If you'd like to go a little further, lift the left leg up. So you're creating a longer line, pulling yourself apart again. 
Rooting back with the sole of your left foot as though you're rooting your foot into the wall behind you. So enliven your toes a little bit. Do a half point and half flex. There you go. And then push back as you reach forward. Take an inhale specifically into that space between your left ribs, the lower ribs, and the top of your left hip. Create more space there. Now bend your top knee, reach around and take a hold of your foot. Kick your foot back into your hand here. If that is too much on your knee, let go of your foot. Just kick back isometrically like you still are kicking into your hand. Keep the chest open. Make sure that lower elbow, your right elbow, is unlocked. Huge inhale here, everybody. Breathing from your hips all the way up to your shoulders. A strong exhale here to hug your spine. Good, and then release your left hand and your left knee down to the floor. Take an inhale to extend. And exhale to engage again. And then we're gonna roll over onto the left hand. So once you're on your left hand and your left knee, open up to the right. Your right foot is on the ground. Chest is open. Find your breath here first. <laughs> Good. As you reach over with your right arm, keep your chest open. Keep your armpit shining more toward the sky than toward the floor. So if you're here and you can't open up, first of all, see if you can get those quadratus lumborum muscles to lift up even more. You maybe need to reach down and just tell them to work a little. But then if you can, you can bring your arm over. But if, again, that closes off your chest, just keep your arm reaching up. Good. Lift up your right leg if you like. Notice how that dips you into this left shoulder if you're not careful. So bending your left elbow, arching away from the floor with the left side body. Reach your right arm as far away from your right foot as possible. Lengthen out your breath here. Lengthen out your spine here. Lengthen out the entire right side of your body as you root the sole of your right foot further back. Then reach your right fingertips further forward. Relax your face. Take another inhale. Exhale, bend your right knee. Reach around and take a hold of your right foot. Open your chest. Take a huge inhale from your hips all the way up to your shoulders, everybody. Exhale, kick your foot back, hug your spine. Huge inhale. Notice there's a nice stretch happening on the belly, the chest, and your hips. Exhale, kick back and increase that stretch. One final inhale here. Exhale, right hand and right knee down to the ground. Take your inhale here, extend your spine. Step up into downward facing dog, bringing your knees off the floor, heels to the ground, down dog. Stay here, breathe here. And as you connect to your breath, make sure you are connecting to your exhale. A lot of times we think of breath as an inhale only. But make sure you are finding that longer, stronger exhale as well here. One last deep breath in here. Exhale all the air out, pull the pelvis back. Think of even this as a pose of traction. Lightening up through the shoulders, the elbows, and the wrists as you engage your core to lift the weight of the pelvis up. And engage your quads to move the thigh bones back. And now let's drop to the knees again. Take an inhale here, extending your spine. As you exhale, round your back. Go ahead and draw your navel in and up. Take your left arm now, open up to the left side. See if you can get your entire chest plate to open to the left. Then bring your left arm underneath you and all the way to the right wall. Slide your hand as far to the right as possible as you drop onto your left shoulder. I'm gonna turn this down just a little more. Good. Keep that breath going. If you would like to go further into this thread the needle pose, bring your right arm up, bend your right elbow, reach around and grab your left inner thigh with your right hand, or just press the back of your hand into the left side of your back. Breathing as deeply as you can here, open up your chest. As you exhale, if you wanna go further, still stand up onto your right toes so that your right knee is off the ground. This will open your chest even more. Take another inhale. If you want to play around with it, stand up onto the pads of your left toes 
And then lift your right leg off the ground. Just for fun. Take one more inhale here. Energize your right leg, whether it's on the floor or not. Then bring that right knee back underneath you. Unravel your body, come back up onto the hands and the knees. Inhaling. Exhale to round your back. We're gonna take it to the other side. Inhale, your right arm comes up. Open the entire chest plate to the right. And exhale, left right arm comes underneath you to the left wall. Hips are high. You can stay here and just claw the floor with your left fingertips. You could also reach your left arm up. Reach around and grab your right inner thigh with your left hand or press your right hand into the right, left hand in the right side of the lower back. Your elbow is pointing up to the ceiling or at least tracking toward the, uh, behind your pelvis. If you'd like to, again, stand up onto the pads of your left toes. Lots of breath here. You could also lift your left foot off the floor, left leg off the floor. If you roll into a side somersault, you've done your fun for the day, right? You need to play every day as well. This can be part of our playfulness. Take one final inhale, root back foot through the sole of your left foot even more. Go ahead and then slowly bring that left knee back in. Unravel. Bring it back up onto the hands and knees as you inhale. And exhale one more time, moving it into downward facing dog. Now in down dog, swivel your hips side to side so that your toes will point to one side while the pelvis moves to the other. Bring it back to center and over to the other side. Keep this going a few more times. Exhaling to one side. Inhaling back to center. Exhaling to the other side. Please notice that you're working your obliques here. Right? On your next inhale, we're going to bring it up to center. This time, though, we're going to exhale, roll to the, so the pelvis rolls to the right, your toes turn to the left. Root down to your right hand and lift your left arm up for Vashastasana. Bend that lower elbow a bit. Take one more inhale here. Arch away from the floor even more. Exhale your left hand down. Bring it back into down dog on an inhale. Exhale, swivel the pelvis over to the left, your toes point to the right. Inhale, your right arm comes up. Do a little variation on Vashi. Bend your left elbow. Arch away from the floor with the left side of your body. Take one final inhale here. And exhale the right hand back down. Inhale into down up. Exhale now up into dolphin pose, dropping your forearms down onto the ground. Once your forearms are on the floor, check in with your breath. <laughs> Draw the sit bones towards your heels. Take one final inhale here in dolphin. Draw your knees out to the edges of your mat. And I do move into a puppy pose here, which is dropping the pelvis down with the hips up high, or sit back onto your heels for a child's pose. I'm not going to sit back and talk because you won't be able to hear me. So go ahead and stay in your child's or your puppy pose. Good, make sure that you are letting your body breathe. If the front of your body's open, if you're in puppy pose, you're breathing more to the abdominal cavity. If you're in a child's pose, you're breathing more to the back of the abdominal cavity, your lower back, and of course the backs of your ribs. Two more breaths here. So take one final deep inhale into your back, or depending if you're, in, if you're in puppy pose into the front of the body. Exhale to dive just a little deeper. Come up so that you are on your knees. We're gonna sit back onto our heels now if that's possible. If that's not possible, take any other seated pose of choice. We won't be here for long. Take an inhale and sweep the arms over your head. As you exhale, you're going to bring your right hand down to the right and reach over with your left arm, just like we did at the beginning when we were standing. Open up even more so that we're stretching out the left side again. Exhale, bend your right elbow. Try to bring your right elbow in towards your right hip and let that take you a lot deeper without closing your chest off. Inhale, rise up, both arms reaching. Exhale, bring your left hand down. 
Bend your left elbow, reach, don't close off the, open up and then reach. Bend your right elbow, it will force your left side, I'm sorry, bend your left elbow, it'll force the left side of your body to hug in even more. Chest stays open, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Use your strength to draw more length. Good, inhale, rise up, press the palms. Nice, exhale, bring your hands down. Slide your hips to one side or the other and unfold your legs. And we're gonna extend our legs onto the mat. Make sure you have plenty of room behind you, so let's slide the hips a little further forward. We will wanna uh, lie down onto our back after this, so just make sure you have enough mat to do that. Flex your feet here, take an inhale and reach up. As you exhale, reach forward. And when you get to a place where you feel like you're straining at all, bring your hands down, stop there. Flex your feet, pick up your sit bones, one sit bone draws back, then the other. And then see if maybe you can walk your hands just a little closer to your ankles, to the outer ankles. Keep the feet flexed. Stay right here, take a deep breath in. Exhale, maybe, just like we did in that side, but maybe we just bend the elbows. We can start to think about the forearms coming closer to the ground. And when we do that, we feel the abs engage more, the lower back is stretching more. Maybe the forehead can relax down toward the shins. Once your elbows bend enough to maybe place your forearms on the floor, push down with the forearms. Meanwhile, push down with those quads. Get your quadriceps to push your thigh bones down into the floor here. If you're not sure if they're working, take your hands to your quads and make sure they're strong. After you feel the quads engaging, you'll be able to go further by engaging your abdominals, of course, again. So do make sure that the abs are strongly drawing your ribs in towards your quads. Push through the inner edges of your Feet, both of the uh, big toe tendons, and you could put your thumbs on those big toe tendons and push the feet forward that way. Just make sure you're not using your hands there to pull yourself deeper. We are here for two more breaths. Even if you're still up here, right, which is barely in that extended spine position, every exhalation pulls you deeper if you let it, right? So don't hold yourself back here. Let the exhale draw you deeper. Take one final exhale, maybe, maybe we go further still. And then reach past your toes and on a long inhale, come up into Dandasana position. Draw the shoulder blades down your back. Your chest is open, spine is extending. Inhaling here. As you exhale, lean back as the, as the arms reach forward. Point your fingers at your toes. Activate your feet. Inhale, reach up. Good, do that again. Exhale, round your back and point your fingers at your toes. Point your toes forward a bit. One more time, inhale, rise up. And exhale, round your back. Good, now roll all the way down onto your back. Use your abdominals here. Slowly, slowly rolling down, mobilizing your spine. Once your head touches the floor, take an inhale, reach your arms over your head. Good, stay right there and exhale, pull yourself apart into equal and opposite directions. So your fingers are reaching even further back and your toes are reaching as far away from your fingers as possible here. Good. Take another strong inhale. Good. And as you exhale now, we're going to draw the knees into our chest. Rock side to side a few times, massaging your back into the floor. After rocking side to side a few times, place the sole of your left foot to the mat and cross the top of your, uh, the outer ankle rather, of your right foot onto the left thigh, right above or below the left knee, depending on how you're looking at that. Your right knee is gonna move away from your chest. So we're not trying to bring the knee in, move it as far away as possible. And you may wanna even take, like I am, take your hand on your inner thigh and just gently push it further away. And then check in with your right hip area. Make sure that your right hip bone is not touching your right thigh bone. You could bring the two finger, first two fingers of your right hand in between those two bones to make sure that they stay away from each other, right? We don't want to bring the hip bone and the thigh bone to touch. Okay, so right knee away, pick up your left foot, but don't bring the knee in with it, right? Pick up your left foot, draw the left knee in, but keep your right knee pointing away from you. Not even just to the right side today, but point your right knee diagonally away from your left shoulder. Bring it in, breathe. Good, now if you feel like this is enough, please stay right here and breathe with this. Your intention is, how far can this right knee move away from my left shoulder in that diagonal line, or even from the right shoulder? 
If you do feel like you can go further, I'd keep my right hand here if I were you. But then keep your, take your left hand to the left shin and start to draw the left knee in a bit closer. Don't let the hip and the thigh bone touch. If you want to use your abs a little more today, keep the right knee moving away from you as you bring your forehead up towards your right foot. Your right knee continues to pull away. You feel that? Good. <laughs> take another inhale here. As you exhale, bring it in even closer. Knee, right knee stays away, left knee comes in closer, abs are strong. Good, release that very slowly down. Now you're going to bring, you're gonna roll over to your left, your knees will roll to the left. Your right foot will step directly down onto the ground and your right knee is going to point toward the ceiling here. Okay, so root down with the sole of your right foot. Now your left foot is going to come in to your right sit bone. Your right arm is going to reach to touch or grab even the top of your left foot. If that is too much on your knee, let go of your foot. Okay, good. Now as you inhale here, if you're not really feeling this, engage your right, at the sole of your right foot and push down more first. Make sure your right knee points up to the ceiling here. Meanwhile, if you're not feeling your left quad stretching yet, engage your left inner thigh, pull your left knee closer to the ground. Contract your left hamstrings, move your left thigh bone into your left quads this time because now we're stretching our quadriceps, so the hamstrings have to support that. You should also feel this on the hip flexor of your left leg. Again, if it's too much, let go of your foot. If it's not quite enough, keep the inner thighs really working to draw the knee closer to the ground. If there's any twinging in your knee, please back off of this stretch. You can still do it, you can still feel your quads stretching, just make sure it's not compromising your knee joint. Take one final inhale here. But exhale, bring your knees back up. We're gonna keep them crossed. And this time, cross your right knee all the way over the left knee. We're gonna roll over to the right side. You're gonna take your right ankle to the top of your left thigh now. And as that left inner knee stays down toward the ground, place your, or press your right outer ankle onto the top of your left thigh. And then again, press down. Now you're stretching the outer thigh of your left leg, your IT band knee and the uh, uh, the abductor muscles. Chest is opening. You can turn your head to look in the opposite direction here, away from the direction your knees are pointing. If this is too intense, you're gonna slide your right foot instead of on top of the leg underneath your left knee so that your left inner knee comes to rest on your right inner ankle. Okay, so whatever feels best for you, make sure you're not straining your left knee. Okay, we're getting the left outer thigh stretching here even the left outer glute. Your chest is open. Please make sure that both of your shoulder blades are on the floor. And if you'd like to include your neck here, turn your head to look away from your knees. Take a huge inhale in this position. As you exhale, bring both knees closer to the floor, the inner right knee and the inner left knee. Or I'm sorry, the outer right knee and the inner left knee. And then very slowly, let's uncross both legs. Bring your feet flat to the mat here and take a deep breath in. Let your back settle into the ground. And if you need to, just lift one hip and then the other and rock side to side across the sacrum for a minute. Good. I will get to the neck stretch as well. All right, now go ahead and let's do the other side. Bring your left foot up to the top of right thigh. Your left knee is going to point away from you, diagonally as far away from this right shoulder as possible. Okay, so it's not just a 90 degree angle this time, it's an obtuse, okay? Why doesn't, then you're gonna bring those two, the first two fingers of your left hand in between your hip and your thigh bone. Hip bone and thigh bone will not touch throughout this entire exercise. If you already feel like this is enough of a stretch, you do not need to go further. If you would like to go further, bring your right foot up, keep your left knee pointing away. If you bring your right foot up and your knee does this, put your right foot back down on the floor. We're this is where we're targeting. All right, take another inhale. If this is your pose, if your right foot just barely off the floor, and we start to bring that left hand right inside the left inner thigh and gently coax the left knee away, again, that might be your stretch. My stretch today, definitely right now at least. If you do feel like you can go further, reach down with your right hand, grab your right shin. Start to bring your right knee in without bringing your left knee with it. Okay, so it's this negotiation. Please stay with your breath. Stay with the feeling. 
You want to make sure that your left hip bone and left thigh bone have a lot of space between them. If you would like to work your abdominals now, lift your head and shoulders off the floor. Keep the left knee tracking away from you. You can even, you're not pushing with your hand, you're just isometrically saying no. Don't come any closer, right? Bend your right elbow if you'd like to bring your right knee in closer to your chest. Lift both of your shoulder blades off the ground. This is just if you want to work your core. This doesn't really give you a deeper stretch. And take one final exhale. Bring your toe, your left toe, as close to your forehead as possible. Check in with your left knee again. Make sure it's still pointing away. And then bring your right foot back down to the ground. Go ahead, take an inhale here. Exhale, roll to the right. The sole of your left foot will now be on the floor. Your left hand is going to reach down to grab the top of your right foot. Draw the right heel towards your sit bone. Either one. <laughs> As you root down with the sole of your left foot, open your chest up here. Now, if you want to, I didn't show this on the last slide, but you could also take your right hand, grab the base of your left shin, and just twist a little more. It doesn't really help anything, but you can keep that left foot really rooting down into the ground. Now, if you're not really feeling this on your right quads yet, engage your right hamstrings, the back of your right thigh, engage your right glutes, and engage your right inner thigh to draw the right inner knee closer to the ground. If you're still not feeling it, draw your right knee so that it's pointing, your kneecap is pointing more towards the very bottom of your mat rather than at a diagonal line. Your chest is open, both shoulder blades are on the floor. Root down with the sole of your left foot. Feel the difference when you decide you're really going to root down with the sole of your left foot. Root down to the inner thigh of your right knee. Your right inner knee gets closer to the ground. Engage your right glutes, your right hamstrings. If this bugs your knee at all for even a moment, let go of your foot back off the stretch. Let your knee rise off the floor a little more. You know what direction to move in to support and protect your knee. So take another inhale, bring it back up. And as you roll to the left side now, you're going to take the right outer, sorry, left outer ankle to the top of your right outer thigh. And draw the right knee a little closer toward the right side of the room and also right inner knee toward the ground. If again, this is too much and maybe it's too much on this side and it wasn't on the last side, bring your left foot underneath your right knee instead, bringing your right inner knee to rest on the left inner ankle or even into the arch of your left foot. Stretch out and feel this stretch on the outside of your right thigh. Turn your head to look over your right shoulder here. Breathe as deeply as you can through the right side of your lower back. Everybody breathing and exhaling. Remember that your exhale is when you go deeper into your twist, right? So that's when we want to feel like we can go further. Make sure you're not trying to inhale your way into a deeper twist. Wait for the exhale to do that. Take a final exhale here. Bring out one more time. Feel that stretch. Hopefully you're all stretched out, feeling that on the IT band of the right leg. And very slowly uncross the legs. Bring your knees, uh, bend your knees and bring your feet back to the floor. Take an inhale here. Good, and now take that rolled up mat or a, a pillow or whatever you have. And if you don't have anything, maybe you just grab your sofa cushion. Okay. And, uh, Place it underneath, or at the end of your mat, and then you're gonna place it underneath the soles of your feet. You can bring the soles of your feet together, or you can, and so this would be Supta Baddha Konasana, right? Or you could take the heels in and your toes out and move into more of a supine frog position. All right, we won't hold this forever, but we are going to hold this while we take a little neck stretch here. So making sure that you have room to reach your arms out to either side of the room. Take an inhale in this position. As you exhale, roll your right ear down as close to the floor as possible. Do make sure that your right shoulder is away from your right ear. Then you're gonna take your left arm and start to reach it more to the left first. So you start to reach further to the left. Your left elbow will come off the floor. If you feel that, you can stay right there. If you'd like to go further, you're going to bring the left hand, the back of your left hand, off the ground and reach it further away. If that uh, doesn't feel like enough of a stretch for you, start bringing the left hand back down onto the floor. Start to sweep the arm up more or down more. For me, it's down where I feel the stretch more. So as I bring the pinky finger toward my left hip area, that's where I get into the stretch for my shoulder and the, I'm sorry, and the neck, right? The left side of my neck. 
but it's also where I feel I can move the right ear a little closer to the floor. So again, play around with where your left hand is. Are you lifting it? Are you lowering it? Are you bringing it above the head? Are you bringing it toward the hip? But find that area that for you is the stretch. Now the beautiful thing about doing this while we're on the floor is that you don't have to ask the weight of your, I'm sorry, you don't have to ask your neck to support the weight of your head. You're letting the floor do that. Breathe into the stretch. Maybe you'll notice that the stretch will dissipate. So come bring another, you know, find another place for your hand to be. And then slowly roll, oh, and I mean really slowly, roll your gaze back to center. Check in with how your hips are feeling. And while your gaze is at the center, by the way, you can close your eyes here, but if your eyes were open, they would be looking up at the ceiling. Just find your breath. Find your hips with your breath. And take at least a full round of breath into the front of your pelvis. While we're stretching out the groin, the inner thighs, and the pelvic, uh, the inner pelvis, right? The muscles that support the inner hips. Take one more inhale here. Now exhale your head to the left, slowly. Your left ear gets as close to the, to the floor as possible here. And in this position, again, you're making sure that you're not bringing your left shoulder up around your ear, right? The left shoulder draws away from the left ear. Your arm can draw further away to, uh, toward the uh, floor. Now, your right arm, play with where you're placing it again. Reach it up, see if that'll do anything. Bring it in line with your shoulder and lift the hand up and reach further. On this side, that's where I feel it the most, is if I lift my hand up. And then I reach the right arm as far away from my right ear as possible. Okay, so different from the other side, depending on how you are feeling on this side. You may find that it's still better to just bring the hand down, right hand down, with your hand on the floor toward the right hip, and that's fine too. Just keep your left ear reaching as close to the left side of the room as possible. Two more breaths in this position. Good, take one final deep breath in here. As you exhale and slowly again, we're gonna bring, see if the left ear can get any closer to the floor. And then just as slowly as possible, head comes back so that your gaze is back at the ceiling here. Change your leg position so that if you were in um, supine frog, you're now in supta baddha konasana and vice versa. We're not gonna hold this counter pose for very long, but just again to change it up for a moment. Good. And then our final pose will be, and I'm gonna have you use your arms to help the legs here because the legs are now relaxed, right? So we don't wanna ask the inner thighs to do more for us right now. You're gonna take your hands to the outer thighs, coax your knees together, and then bring the legs straight, straight up over your hips. Flex your feet. And then just let your arms rest. You can cross your arms over your chest or let them rest out to the side, but make sure you're not using your arms for this one. We're gonna take a deep breath in into the backs of our legs, up the back to the side, and pull the toes over your head. Keep your neck relaxed. We just relaxed it. <laughs> I can't even see you guys, and I can tell you this tense up your neck, so don't do that. All right, from there, as you relax your face, your neck, your jaw, your teeth, the root of your tongue, your eyes, your forehead, your temples, your ears, anything else that you could be tensing up, engage your core instead, right? Find that inner strength. It is our inner strength that supports our outer openness. One day I'm gonna make a bumper sticker. Take one more inhale here. Exhale, see if your toes can pull a little further over your head. Instead of using your arms to pull your legs in, please use your quads and your abs to do the same thing. It means we don't have to push too far too fast, and it means that we can actually go further, but we're going further with integrity. Take one final exhale here, see if the toes can pull any further back. And now slowly, slowly release your pelvis back down to the ground. Bend the knees and place the soles of your feet down to the ground. Take a huge inhale here and sweep the arms alongside the torso. And once again, we're gonna find our breath. Our finishing pose today, uh, and, and by the way, you can take your Savasana right now if you want to, but if you would like to, and you do have a chair or you have your sofa or you have a bolster that you can lay your calves on, please place your calves on the chair or on the seat of the sofa. We're on the bolster. And then you're going to lay back and take your arms out so that your palms are facing up. 
Your knees are pointing directly to the sky. Your feet are relaxed. And instead of your heels being the only part of the foot on the, on the uh, bolster, on, on the bolster or the chair, make sure that you are close enough that the calf muscles are resting as well. Close your eyes. Find a deep breath and take three more of the longest, deepest inhales and exhales possible. Just three more. An inhale that lasts as close to 10 seconds as possible. An inhale that first of all, fills up the pelvis and then the abdominal cavity and then the floating ribs, your lower thoracic cavity and then your upper ribs, your upper thoracic cavity. An exhale that lasts longer than your inhale. So if you just inhale for 10 seconds, you're exhaling for 12 maybe. Right, take the strongest, longest exhale, but make sure that that exhale keeps you relaxed, that we're not clenching up or tensing up anywhere. You're letting the floor support you now. So your exhale is more of this reminder to let go and be well in our bodies right now. Do that three more times and then just let all of the effort behind your breath fall away. Now notice how your back feels. If you don't let your back relax completely, what will happen is even in a pose that's supposed to be relaxing, we'll find we're pinching up our lumbar or lower thoracic spine. But please allow the back to relax. You know that the floor is there and can totally support your body weight. So please allow it to. This is called easy release pose. It is for our iliopsoas muscles. You may be able to feel that muscle group. It feels like a little hammock that your internal organs are descending into right now as you release your back into the ground, as you try not to hold your back off the floor, but instead you allow your back to relax. Feel that and you'll feel this calm come over your body when you allow that to take place. This is stimulating our parasympathetic nervous system, inducing the rest and digest. Uh, Part of our part of, part of ourselves, right? So we are in the opposite of fight or flight response. Now do just one more thing before I let you finish your practice. You're gonna rub the hands together as strongly as you can and as quickly as you can to generate some heat there. Place your right palm over your right eye, the left palm over the left eye. Your the pinky edges of your hands are wrapped around or pressing in gently into the sides of your neck nose so that you're shutting out all external light. Make sure you're not pushing on your eyes or puffing your eyes so there is space between your palms and your eyelids. And as you shut out all external light, you are in, in another way um, inducing that relaxation response. As we take away one of the stimulants for our central nervous system, right? We shut out all of that external light. And again, hopefully you can immediately feel some greater calm, some, some greater equanimity come and through the entire body. If you see any light behind your eyelids, that's your internal light. When your arms get tired, you can bring your arms down alongside your torso at any time. Our time is up, but I will allow you just to stay resting on the ground for as long as you would like to. And I'll leave you with this idea that um, you've heard me say many times if you've taken any of my stiffer bodies classes, but just that when we are strong internally, when we can learn how to rely on our inner strength, we can be open to much more. We can be more receptive. We can have an open heart, knowing that behind that open heart is, a, is the strength to support an open heart. And we really need that these days. We also need to know that part of that openness and receptivity is our willingness to receive from others when we need help. It's gotta be in a give and take right now. It can't just be an exhale. It has to be an inhale too. Thank you so much for your practice today and for being here with me. I hope to see you again really soon. Namaste.